And then welcome back to the chase. Hi. Revenge my family. I have like three thousand. <laughs> The all new Toyota Corona, excellence and elegance. Toyota, you're so right. Seek until you find it. Hi, I'm Arana. I'll be honest with you. I have an English report due on Monday. Okay, now, for my report, I have three questions I have to do. Now, my topic is about mental health. The first one is, what ideologies have led to this problem? Okay, now, my second question is what impact does mental health have on people? Take on me. Now, my third question is why is mental illnesses on the rise? Now, and the last thing I have to do after those three questions is my opinion. Take on me. Oh, welcome back. Now, for the first question ideologies. Now, I couldn't find an ideology. It wasn't really an idea, but more towards people's attitudes and belief about mental illnesses that shapes their personal knowledge, not a not just an idea, not just a political belief. Not just that, but there's also a strong link between the media and how they show mental illnesses that more or less shapes people's ideas. Not, not socialism or fascism like that. Now this is according to the NIH, which is a health organization in the USA. But the NIH also suggests that people's attitude towards mental illnesses are more rejecting than accepting. But mental health professionals and advocates also suggest spoke of news media highlighting mental illnesses as a characteristic of difference and using it to separate and discriminate. Now, this information comes in format, which is a US based website. Now, it's not just the media who's shaping the ideas of mental health into people, but also culture. An Indian woman gave an interview to Women's Health in 2016, and, and I quote Within Indian culture, mental illness is often perceived as a curse, punishment for past sins, or possessed by demon spirits. It is also perceived as a black mark on the individual and their entire family. So it's also a cultural thing, not just the media as well, that shapes people's ideas on mental health. Now, my second question, I will be honest, I'm struggling there a bit, but for the third one though, I got some good news. Why is it on the rise? Well, you see, numerous studies have found that, um, teens, well, they have depression. And it's been on the rise since 2011. Now, that's another question is, why is depression rising? And that... Well, because of lack of sleep, because they're concerned about climate change, their political views, wealth inequality, and many other things. And because of this depression rising, 
also mental health as well, I see. Now this information comes from Mental Health Aotearoa. I heard they do pretty cool stuff. Oh, yeah there. Now, Miss also said that I had to have an opinion how to fix the problem. I, I don't know. I I that's also another one. I, I just don't know. Now I could be doing work. Or or we watch some envy. Well that's what I'm gonna do. I got a bit of a problem my work. Struggling with question two and my our opinion? My opinion. Yes, I know. I'm you. Even though I'm struggling a bit on. Sorry? That oh. vocal tone. Sorry. Ow. Pass it. Pass it. We won't be needing it. You got me. Um. Okay. Now. Remember that third question? Why is it on the rise? Um, see, another reason, I don't know. It happens because people don't take the meds. Or they don't see doctors anymore. Because why would you want to see doctors? You can't trust them. See, I got this source from the Journal of Mental Yes, good, 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 very good. See, self stigma was also another thing that has shaped people's view on mental health. See, what self stigma? See, self stigma is the feeling of shame. People with mental illnesses have. They feel guilty. They they feel quite embarrassed or quite weak. They hate it. They hate the mental illness and they they also put fuel to the fire. But they didn't start it. And they're not trying to fight it. Now question two, in my opinion, right? I'm struggling there. You should know this. Because remember, you're me. I forgot. It's from Health and Illnesses, 2009, Volume 41, Issue 3. God, imagine I forgot to say that to you. Or else you wouldn't know where I got that from. I could have just made that up. And we wouldn't. That wouldn't be good for the report if I just made up stuff, would it now? Do you wanna, do you wanna see something very scary? Okay, show me. <sighs> What's that gonna do with mental health? Mental health? Well, I got the answer for you. For question two, the impacts that social media have on mental health, a 2000 study of more than 6,500, no, yes, yeah, I know it accounts. 6,500 12 to 15 year olds found that those who spent more than three hours a day using social media might be a heightened risk for mental health problems. John Hipkins University. Did you know that in 2019, a study of more than 10,000 12 to 16 year olds in England found that social media more than three times a day had poor mental health and well being? The Lawrence 2019, a peer review study, and another study with more than 400 
450 teens which found the greater social media use, nighttime social media use, and emotional investment in social media has links with depression or anxiety. The Mayo Clinic. Hi, I'm Arana, and I'm the director of Human Grace. I got some bad news. The scenes that you're about to watch were not filmed in normal speed. Rangi filmed it four times the speed. So, there's no audio. And, um,. So I gotta explain what happens. You see, originally, I was to stand up, walk to the camera, blood, and explain my opinion. But no. So what? What is my opinion? My opinion to fix a problem is to treat yourself with kindness and respect, and avoid self-stigma. Taking care of yourself physically and avoiding smoking and vaping. Exercising and getting enough sleep. Last but not least, seek help. Is last but not least, seek help.